distinguished and eminent participants present here. I welcome you all to a very important session on budget 24-25. Friends, put in simple terms, budget is a statement of revenue and expenditure of the government. But how the government raises the revenue and where does it is spent? It is these aspects that make this document touch and impact almost every citizen of the country. I'm not aware if there is any document, any government document, which has such an overarching reach and so impactful. But it also gives the status of our economy and its direction, where the country is heading. Friends, our country, we have lost numerous opportunities. At the time, India became independent. We were the sixth largest economy in the world. And subsequent six and a half decades, we dipped down to the 11th position. We chose directions which took us downward. Instead of solving the nation's problem, the problems continue getting more and more complicated. It created loss of confidence. Our friends were disappointed. We know Lee Kuo Yew, the founder of modern Singapore, and keen observer of India and the well-wisher of India. He observed this country's growth right from the beginning and eventually he concluded as a disappointed person says, India is a nation of unfulfilled greatness. Is that going to be our destiny? Certainly not. It's not acceptable. We have the government of Prime Minister Modi for the last over 10 years. And we are moving, the country is moving with a clarity of vision and consistency in policies. The vision is to have a self-reliant India, Atmanirvar Bharat, and a developed India by 2047. And accordingly, policies are crafted to fulfill that vision. Budget, the essential and economic document, it is inherently political. And so it attracts a lot of political attention. Political parties, political commentators, they interpret it according to their understanding and their interest. And what we have is a resultant lot of noise and confusion. To cut this cobweb of confusion and bring clarity, we have in, in our midst our chief economic advisor, who is responsible for preparing the document about the economic survey of the nation and contributing valuably to framing of the budget. So we have the person in front of you, from within the system, a very, very important person. You will hear him and you will ask your questions, clarify your doubts. 
And for the advantage of our chief guests, I would like you to know that here we have in front of us representative from almost all states of our Indian economy. Industry, big and small, farm sectors, entrepreneurs, the startup. By and large, our effort has been to make it as representative as possible. Friends, you are all here, make the best use of it. I wish this a very, very fruitful and productive session. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you all a very good evening. Budget to Darbana in the Varaitu, in the Bandirukum, Ungar Yellowukum, in India, Nandi Kalanda and Bahamana Kandar. wanted to have a presentation on the state of the economy. He wanted it to be not just an assessment of the economy, but also what steps has the government taken in this budget, which is the first one in the third term of the ADA government, to strengthen the foundations of the economy and to take it forward towards, as he put it very well, towards fulfilling its potential and its greatness. So in the next 40-45 minutes, I will share with you some of the assessments we made in the economic survey about the medium term challenges and how specifically the budget has aligned itself to the challenges we identified in the economic survey. In fact, among the various messages I received post the presentation of the economic survey. One of the messages I really valued and made me feel very happy about the economic survey was the one I received from Professor N. R. Bhanamurti. He said, in a very long time, I have not seen such a synergy between the economic survey and the budget. And that was a very uh, gratifying message and I hope the presentation also leaves you with the same feeling that the government is very cognizant, very conscious of the challenges we have identified. Very quickly, in the first few minutes, I will share with you where the economy is. Post-COVID, Indian economy has grown very well at the macro level. In the current financial year, the Reserve Bank of India expects the economy to grow 7.2%. Economic survey has a slightly more cautious attitude, expects the growth rate to be 6.5 to 7. In the last financial year, it is 8.2, the year before 7% and the year before 9.7%. Nominal GDP the size of the economy is 300 lakh crores, almost. 295 trillion, 295 lakh crores. One thing we must remember is, compared to many other countries in the world, including developed countries, India has done very well in the post-COVID phase. And that is because, and we don't really appreciate it enough, if we have followed the economic policies that advanced nations followed during COVID, sending a lot of money to people and keeping interest rates very low for a long period. We might not have faced the contraction in 2020-2021 when the Indian economy declined, the growth rate declined, the growth rate was negative, it was minus 5.8%. 
we will not have experienced the kind of strong recovery we have experienced. Today, we will be dealing with high inflation, double digit inflation, and we will be dealing with a very weak currency, and we will be all burdened with very high interest rates. So the way the COVID pandemic was handled with caution, prudence, targeted relief has played a very important role in setting the economy on a strong growth path. On the right side, what you see is the balance of different sectors, private consumption, investment, the green color, exports. What I would like to draw your attention is the investment, capital formation. 27.3% of the economy was contributed to by the capital formation. It has now improved to 30.8%. Not only because the government is investing, but also because after last decade, 2012 to 2020, Companies and banks were having problems with too much of lending and too much of borrowing. That is now history. That is behind us. And companies have begun to invest also. India's exports, especially global capability centers, services exports, are doing better from 18.7% share of GDP. It has improved to 21.9% share of GDP. Consumption is steady at around 60 percent. In this slide, I give you a very quick overview of different dimensions of the Indian economy. In the top left, what you see is external debt, Anya Saravani Kadan. Compared to other countries, India has a very low foreign currency debt. We don't borrow from foreigners also. That is what you see on the left top. On the right top, you see banking sector, bad debt, Vara Kadar. That used to be 11.2%, now it is only 2.8%. The insolvency and bankruptcy code, higher capital provision by the government, banks themselves pro pro creating more provisions out of profits, and of course, the growth in the base, the asset base of banks in the last four years, have all contributed to a very healthy balance sheets for Indian banks, so they are now lending. On the bottom left, what you see is Virayasi Vergu, inflation. India's average inflation since independence was around 7%, but in the last 10 years, it is around 5%, 5.2%. Between 2009 and 2014, Indian economy experienced five consecutive years of double-digit inflation. But now it is 5.4%. And compared to many other countries post-COVID, which had double-digit inflation rate, about 10%, including advanced countries, India's peak inflation post-COVID never crossed 7.8%. On the right side, what you see is the balance, the proportion between government spending, investment spending and current revenue expenditure. That balance was 30% for capital expenditure, investments for the future and 70% for current expenditure. And now if you look at it, that is almost equal. So all the tax rupees that we are paying is going towards boosting the infrastructure, in the productive capacity of the Indian economy, which used to be a challenge, which used to be a major weakness, now it is on its way to becoming a strength for the Indian economy. The national highway total length has grown more than 60% in 8 years. So if we build 100 kilometers up to 2014, in the last 6 years, in the last eight years, it has become 160 kilometers, for example. So whatever we built in the first seven decades since independence, we could add 60% of it in the last eight to ten years. The number of one-day bar of trains, the railway electrification, introduction of metro trains as well, the turnaround time in Indian port 
used to be more than a week. Now it is even better than some of the East Asian ports. India built 74 airports between 1947 and 2014. Between 2014 and 2022, the number doubled, more than doubled to 149 in just eight years. The waiting time at toll plazas because of the introduction of GST and abolition of local taxes, octroi, etc., has come down from 734 seconds to 47 seconds. In the middle, what you see is all of these contributing to India's improvement in the logistics performance index, improving from 44 in 2018 to 38 in 2023, according to the World Bank Logistics Performance Index. Professor Joe Robinson in the UK told her doctoral student, Mr. Amartya Sen, in the, in the 1960s, that whatever you say about India, the opposite is equally true. Because it is such a huge continent size economy, there are always challenges, but there is also a lot of progress. In 1990, India's per capita income was 6,000 rupees. Now it is 2.1 lakh rupees per person, 35 times increase. In dollar terms, it has gone up by seven times, $348 to $2,500 in the last 30 years. Some of you may think in the same period, China has increased even more, much more. But ladies and gentlemen, we should also remember that the amount of debt that China's economy carries has grown much faster than GDP. So, per dollar of debt, India has generated more GDP than China could generate in the last 30 years. India China 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 has done very well. For this year, 24-25, as I said, we have a forecast of 6.5 to 7 percent growth in the economy. Many other international organizations, RBI has a higher forecast. I will explain later towards the end, subject to time, why we have a slightly more cautious and a prudent view. Now, as the Honorable Governor pointed out, the Economic Survey is a comprehensive document. It is like an annual report of the economy. It is published in Hindi and English. It is also translated into other languages. In fact, we should translate into other languages. Chapter 5 of the Indian Economic Survey has identified these important issues. We are now in 2024, another three more months to go. And we are looking at a target of becoming a developed country in 23 years, in 2047. There are two or three things we should remember. China became a developed country, almost a developed country, in the last 30 years, 30 to 40 years. But China had four important advantages which India will not have. What are those four advantages? One, world economy was growing very well in the last 30, 40 years, by and large. Global trade, Bhattana, Echumadi, Irakumadi, Global trade was growing. Global countries were relatively more peaceful, at peace with one another. After Soviet Union collapsed, there was relatively a small period of 20 years of global peace that is no longer with us. That is the second disadvantage. The third disadvantage, climate change. Today we have to worry about can we burn coal? Can we use coal to produce electricity? Can we use petrol and diesel? We need to shift to renewable energy. China did not have to worry about it. 
Today's developed countries like USA and European countries did not have to worry about it. We have to worry about it. The fourth disadvantage for India, the presence of China itself as a big rival, manufacturing rival, economic rival, because India wants to become a global manufacturing powerhouse, but China is still a big competitor. China did not have to face the competition of China. India has to face the competition of China. These four factors are important challenges which did not affect China when it was growing from 1980 to 2015, the peak period of China's growth. So we have to focus on domestic growth. We have to focus on what we can do inside our borders to grow the economy. And these are the important areas we identified in the economic survey. And the budget for each one of these has allocated money to grow the economy. First, agriculture. Vivasaya Valachi. Remember, Vivasaya in the Papam Bodhir, we normally think of an Arisi Godumai, Panji Cotton, or Karundu. Anna, Vivasaya Vivasaya in Papam Bodhir, Niki, fisheries, dairy products, poultry, fruits and flowers, horticulture around it. All these areas are growing at double the rate of cereal, rice and wheat. Then the other rice and wheat, cotton and sugar cane are water intensive. We need to boost, but we don't grow enough of pulses, karutu vayera. Adhradhan avakandhu protein sirtha. And nariya adhar import pandhra, irakumari pandhra, anniya salavani adhradhan basalavali kira. Adhradhan bodhi health kun alladhe, that is rice and wheat, only carbohydrates. So, in the Madhuri, Nambaluriya, Vivasara Urupati, Yenda Pakamudu, Visay Matam Sayya Vendam, Apeenga Lepati, and the economic survey la Eji Rukon, Adhukki Eta Madhuri, Vendu Vivasara Urupati, Unda Price Signals, Have to reach that. Mukhiya Vana Sree Dhirutam, Second important reform we need to do in agriculture is land reform, land consolidation. Earlier in the 1970s, average size was 2.8 hectare. Now it has come down to just 1 hectare. To use mechanization, to use tractors, to use technology, you need at least 4 hectare size. But this is an area for state governments also to cooperate. This is one of the things you will find in the next 30 minutes of my presentation. In the last 30 years, we have done many of the important Seer Dirtangal changes, reforms at the union government level. In the next 30 years, we need a collaboration between union, state and local governments because many of the actions that need to be taken are in the areas of, in the domain of state governments and local governments. If you look at the climate change, rice, wheat, pulses, the yield will go down by 2.3% because of extreme weather. And by 2050, the yield will drop by almost 9%. And as I told you, we import oil and pulses. They account for two-thirds of India's agricultural imports. And they are also nutritionally more important to us than rice and wheat. Therefore, boosting irrigation, area under irrigation, and creating the right incentive for pulses has to become an important policy priority. So what has the the next aspect is agricultural productivity, Uttarki Piran. If you look at tomatoes, cotton, onion, vegetables, mangoes, even rice, we are below the global average. One hectare, for example, tomatoes are 25 ton, we produce one ton. Wolaga Sarasari average cutting in a perfect return or a hectare. In fact, a lot of clear when the Rumba Adigamana Uppati tomatoes are Pandramana, Scandinavian countries, Norway, Sweden, Avangalo, four hundred and seventy five tons per hectare. Twenty five and four hundred and seventy five and so number twenty will catch up under the Naria right to the Rikin, Naria scope Rikin, other than a Sanjona, Iniki Ohamilka Naramela. African countries, Makta, Ashi, and other countries are Papum Bode, Avangalikan and Bavandu, one of the eight to make it under Inum Adigama, Anya Sarabi, and Sambarika Bodio. Number nineteen sixties, Lavandu were a Makta Nadala and Nambi number in law. 
உணவு இறக்குமதிக்கு இப்ப வந்து அந்த ஐம்பது பில்லியன் டாலர் வி ஆர் எக்ஸ்போர்டிங் ஃபுட் தட் கேன் பிகம் ஹண்ட்ரட் ஆர் டூ ஹண்ட்ரட் பில்லியன் டாலர்ஸ் இஃப் வி இம்ப்ரூவ் அக்ரிகல்ச்சரல் ப்ரொடக்டிவிட்டி அண்ட் இட் இஸ் அ குளோபல் பொலிட்டிக்கல் பவர்ஃபுல் வெப்பன் ஆல்சோ ஃபார் அஸ் வாட் இஸ் யூனியன் பட்ஜெட் ஹஸ் தான் டு அட்ரெஸ் தீஸ் சேலஞ்சஸ் ஒரு கோடி விவசாயிகளுக்கு வில் ரிசீவ் சர்டிபிகேஷன் அண்ட் பிராண்டிங் சப்போர்ட் ஃபார் நேச்சுரல் ஃபார்மிங் 10000 need based bio input resource centers will be established adoption of nano fertilizer in all 15 agro climatic zones these are all the announcements made in the budget 24 25 allocation to agriculture has grown from 1.25 lakh crores to 1.32 lakh crores in the last 2 years 109 high yielding and climate resilient varieties of 32 field and horticulture crops have been released they were already done it was a budget announcement made in july it was fulfilled one month later atmanirbhar oil seeds abhiyan will focus on research of high yield variety seeds for mustard groundnut sesame oil and sunflower collaboration between farmers state and industry to public private partnership more for enhancing the productivity of extra long staple cotton in the நம்மளுடைய அக்ரிகல்ச்சர் ஹிஸ்டரி எடுத்து பார்த்தீங்கன்னா வந்தபோது ஆர்என்டி கான்ட்ரிபியூட் லாட் அக்ரிகல்ச்சரல் ஆர்என்டி அதனால தான் இந்த பட்ஜெட்ல வந்து தட் இஸ் அலோகேஷன் ஃபார் ஆயில் சீட்ஸ் அபியான் ஃபார் அக்ரிகல்ச்சரல் ரிசர்ச் பிகாஸ் ஒரு ரூபா செலவு பண்ண ரிசர்ச்ல அதனுடைய பலன் வந்து கிட்டத்தட்ட அஞ்சு ரூபாய்க்கு நமக்கு கிடைக்குது ஸோ அக்ரிகல்ச்சரல் ரிசர்ச் அண்ட் டெவலப்மெண்ட் இஸ் வெரி இம்பார்ட்டன் காம்பனன்ட் ஆஃப் த பட்ஜெட் அடுத்தது வேலை வாய்ப்பு வேலை வாய்ப்பு திறன் employment and skilling economic survey chapter 8 எடுத்து பாத்தீங்கன்னா நம்ம வந்து வர ஆண்டுகள்ல ஒரு வருஷத்துக்கு எவ்வளவு வேலை வாய்ப்புகள் உருவாக்கப்பட வேண்டும் அப்படிங்கறத பத்தி நாங்க கணக்கு கணக்கு எடுத்து அதுல எழுதி இருக்கோம் அது என்ன மாதிரி கணக்கு பண்ணிருக்கோம் அதுக்கு உண்டான அனுமானங்கள் என்ன அசம்ஷன்ஸ் என்ன அப்படிங்கறத we have also included the calculations in the economic survey you can download and check our numbers இன்னொரு லட்சம் வேலை வாய்ப்பு உருவாக்கப்பட வேண்டும் அடுத்த பன்னெண்டு பதிமூணு வருஷங்கள்ல ஒரு வருஷத்துக்கு கிட்டத்தட்ட எண்பது லட்சம் வேலை வாய்ப்புகள் உருவாக்கப்பட வேண்டும் அது எப்படின்னா ஸ்கில்லிங் அண்ட் எஜுகேஷன் இப்போ நீங்க ரெண்டாயிரத்தையும் ரெண்டாயிரத்தி இருபத்தி ஐந்தையும் கம்பேர் பண்ணீங்கன்னா ரூரல் இந்தியா இஸ் நவ் டேக்கிங் அப் ஹையர் செகண்டரி எஜுகேஷன் அண்ட் யூனிவர்சிட்டி டிகிரி எஜுகேஷன் மச் மோர் தென் டுவெண்டி இயர்ஸ் அகோ same thing happening in urban india but it is happening much faster in rural india which is a matter of satisfaction to all of us and more than that if you go down the details in the economic survey you will see that women are taking up higher education more than men and across all castes and all religions women are doing greater enrollment in higher education and if you look at the tertiary education 20 years ago we used to have only 6.7% of school graduates entering university education now it is 28.4% it's improving and 20 years ago for every 100 men going to college there are only 77 women going to college now for every 100 men going to college there are 97 women going to college the gap is fast getting closed so 20 years ago we used to worry about enrollment in institutions today enrollment is not a problem learning outcomes are a problem so we have graduated from one problem to a bigger and more important problem the earlier problem of enrollment has been taken care of that's an important achievement even as we worry about the challenges we need to also remember and celebrate the achievements and success we have made that is what will give us the confidence to address the future challenges the other aspect is skilling so enrollment or the pop but nammudaiya kallurigal endra veliya vara pattadarigal vela seiyaradhukku undana thiranoda veliya varangala illaya apdiyar sodhi kerathukku or paycha irukku adu vandu cia confederation of indian industries and we box abinu or american testing organization seidu uruvaathina or paycha test or or vasathile or naalukku 5 lakh pay andha paycha eduranga ரெண்டாயிரத்தி 
are not yet ready to be employed, they need to be skilled. So this is an area that we need to focus on. Women in the workforce. Now, I'm the to tell you Barum Andhavella Pandavendi, a seal Tirukandella, Naraya Vandu Pandu, Manilanda Pirikun Solita, Idu Vandu Udara. Women Pendal Vandi, Enda Perehala, Pandu Eka Muria, the Aprina Tisala, Vidhi Murahel, Katipanagal, Tarehel Vandu, over safety Naraya Ekanala, Motta, the Putina, hundred and thirty nine prohibitions on women from participating in factory processes. Therefore, the current labor regulations have the unintended adverse consequence of the workforce and women especially. 11 states bar women's employment at night. Of course, law and order, safety are underlying important minimum conditions for women to be able to come out and join the labor force. But equally important, we need to focus on artificial restrictions we have created on women's employment. And that is the responsibility of the state and local governments as well. So today in the budget, so given these problems, what has the budget done? We are focused on industry leaders are now encouraged to channel their CSR funds into internships of 1 crore youth over the next 5 years. Employment link incentive to companies of 3000 rupees every month for each additional employee up to 1 lakh rupees salary. This should create jobs for 50 lakhs people. Freshers entering the formal sector will receive one-time wage support of up to 15,000 rupees. This should benefit about 2.1 crore young people. And the eShram portal will be integrated with other portals to provide up-to-date information on job openings and skill requirements. These are all the steps announced in the budget to encourage employment, to encourage skilling. Modern skill loan up to 7.5 lakh will benefit 25,000 students annually, loans up to 10 lakh rupees for higher education. Strengthening teacher learning and results for states, stars system, receive one and a half times more budgetary support, 800 crores going up to 1,250 crores. PM Shri schools receive a 51% increase, 4,000 crore in FI24 going up to 6,050 crores. PM Usha USHA, which focuses on raising the quality of higher education, saw a 21% increase in outlay. Promoting greater female labor force participation. Rather than the Munadi identified over challenges, direct action in the budget, Adapatina by Po Solva. Allocation of 1000 crore for welfare of female key workers in FI22. Maria Saman saving certificate for two years at 7.5% interest in FI24. In the intervening budget announced in February 2025, target for Lakpati DD enhanced from 2 crores under the Green Dayal Antoria Yojana. In the union budget FI25, working women's hostel to be established in collaboration with industries, pressures for child care and promotion of market access for women-led self-help group enterprises. So the allocation for women's safety having gone up by more than 3x compared to FI24 and FI25. The most second important challenge is how do we boost manufacturing? In the slide department, one of the things you notice is that India has a large number of entrepreneurs. We are an entrepreneurial society. But only 491 enterprises are listed on the stock exchange. We have almost 15 lakh companies, of which 14 lakhs are non-financial, but only 97,000 have a paid up capital of more than 1 crore. And of that, only 7,000 have an equity capital of more than 25 crores. Rather, in the number of them, Germany, Japan, Switzerland, UK, they all have a vibrant small and medium enterprise sector. Number after every year, we have a large number of very small enterprises and a few large enterprises we have a missing, missing middle. So how do we fill the missing middle gap? The small and medium enterprise. We have micro, we have large. We need to have a good chunk of small and medium enterprises. Manufacturing share of GDP has to go up as well. It was 19%, now it is down to 15%. Of course, 
செகண்ட் டெக்கேட் டூ தௌசண்ட் லெவன் டு டுவெண்ட்டி நம்ம பார்த்தோம்னா அப்போ வந்து பேங்க்குகள் வந்து கடன் கொடுக்கல கம்பெனிஸ் வேர் ரெடியூசிங் த டெக் and global economy was not growing very well so these are all multiple reasons but we also had our own challenges to overcome to increase the share of manufacturing in the gdp one of the challenges we have is high import duties comparing india's tariff with major exporters india has a higher average tariff and a higher average tariff peak in the absence of domestic capacity the cost of production increase due to tariffs on inputs on the supply chain raising the total bill of materials the largest share in the total bill of materials were printed circuits board assembly camera modules connectors charger adapter we have we want to become a global mobile phone exporting power house but we have all these higher duties as you can see on the right side also india's average most favored nation applied tariff in india is about 18.3% everybody else is much lower average most favored nation applied tariff for non agricultural products in select countries india 14.9% others were much lower cost and benefit to therefore manufacturers and consumers so if we want to become a major exporting nation we also make need to keep our input cost of imports lower so we took some early steps in this budget for example the iphone 16 which was released uh, last week even though it is produced in india the iphone price in india is higher than the iphone 16 price in other countries but the reason that we are getting there this budget announced reduction in duties in all these areas which we identified two slides before as a circuit board assembly camera lens connectors proper use in the manufacture of resistors critical minerals in all these cases we have brought down the duty rates to zero and in the case of printed circuit board we have brought it brought it down from 20 to 50 so we are making important progress in reducing the input cost so that we can actually become export center for mobile phones we already have made a spectacular success of mobile phone exports but we have much more scope to improve it and the budget has announced important reduction in the import duties for uh, the components that go into mobile phone production msme manufacturing so most of the msmes here you will know that one of the problems is in getting prompt payment so that is a long standing issue we are making slow progress it is also a cultural thing it's also a behavioral issue we cannot solve many problems only through rules laws and regulation there has to be a culture change also in general if you look at the data we find that large enterprises in the country actually depend on small enterprises as a source of working capital it should be the other way around and that requires many more years of persuasion data based analysis and arguments to show at the same time rules and regulations also are being changed forcing many large enterprises to discount their bills on trade receivable discounting platform etc the limit of mudra loans gst sahay gst invoices being used as a collateral for working capital loans all these measures are being announced in the budget public sector banks will build in house msme loan assessment facilities with a focus on digital footprint of msme in addition to traditional assessment methods credit guarantee scheme of up to 100 crore loans is being worked out i was part of the working group that uh, came up with the scheme which was included in the budget by the honorable finance minister and in the next few months this will become a reality there will be a credit guarantee scheme of up to 100 crores for manufacturing loans also these were announced in the budget and there is a pli for manufacturing that will almost going up by 60% from 1200 crores to 2100 crores semiconductor manufacturing has also seen a doubling of allocation on the left side you see that we are creating plug and play industrial parks with complete infrastructure in about 100 cities promotion of skill development for industries epfo based incentives in the first four years of employment in the manufacturing sector and pli scheme itself is being boosted 176 msmes are there across 14 sectors they have benefited 
1.23 lakh crores of new investments have come because of PLI and employment for 8 lakh people have been generated so far. Innovation, research and development. India in general spends very little on research and development. This is not government, this is the entire country including the private sector. In fact, if anything, whatever little R&D spending happens in the country, it is happening mostly because of government spending, union government, state governments, etc. But private sector in general in India spends very little on research and development, especially the large corporate sector. India's gross expenditure on R&D is much lower than that of the top 10 economies owing to lower business sector contribution. For example, only 37% in India compared to large economies such as China, US, Japan and UK which is averaging 68%. So the private sector has to step up. The one way to think of R&D is not as an expenditure but as an investment in the long term future, long term profitability. It is striking the right balance between short term and long term profitability. And if you look at quantum computing, the top five countries in quantum computing, India is not there. Post quantum cryptography, India has India's a very small share. Look at the gap between India and China. 30.98% share, India has 3.69. And then whether it is quantum communication, whether it is quantum sensors, India is not there. And this is the area of the future. Therefore, the budget has increased the allocation from 840 crores to 1200 crores, a national research fund, Anusambhan National Research Fund promoting R&D and innovation with a pool of 1 lakh crore with zero to very low interest rate. It will provide high level strategic direction for scientific research, ensuring collaboration between academia, government and the industry. A venture capital fund of 1000 crores to expand space economy by five times agricultural research, R&D for small and modular nuclear reactors, scheme for expediting deep tech research for defense purposes and Arpanet Barbarta. And specifically for quantum computing, India has approved a national quantum mission at the total cost of 6,000 crores. It aims to see, nurture and scale up scientific and industrial R&D in quantum technology. Satellites, satellite based secure quantum communication between ground stations and CDOT, by the way, just uh, last week I took my team for a visit to CDOT in Delhi. The kind of work they are doing in developing indigenous 4G and 5G because earlier wars used to be fought, uh, fought on the battlefields and we used to worry about physical security, the kind of tanks, aircrafts, missiles, but today wars will be fight, fought in the financial sector. Wars will be fought in the communication sector, in the power sector. All you need to do is to cripple the control systems. And therefore, developing high-tech foolproof security is such an important element of future economic growth. And CDOT is doing tremendous work, uh, developing indigenous 4G and 5G. I don't know how many of you have visited the website called sancharsati.com. If you have not done so, you should do so. Sancha Sati, S A A T H I. Sancha Sati is one word. When you have a phone number, you number you have a connection in the country. You have a phone number. 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 You can invalidate those SIMs straight away so that your number is only your number you are, you are not sharing your number with the three or four other people you can check that immediately you can invalidate it so this is the kind of work and in fact they have developed the technology if your phone is lost CDOT has developed the technology they can locate the exact address in which your phone is there if it is lost of course the police departments of different states have to use that information to help you find the phone. That's a different issue. But they have the technology to be able to locate where your phone is to the right to the address where it is currently being held. So these are the kind of very important work that, and also they are developing a lot of uh, secure communications for the army, for the uh, uh, aviation sector, etc. 
So we need funding for all of this. If you look at the kind of ISRO that we are able to send uh, rocket and space mission, Mars mission, landing on the south side of the moon, etc. And we are doing it at shoestring budget compared to developed countries. Similarly, CDOT is working on many of these things with a shoestring budget. So sometimes when we think about the budget and the deficit and the amount of taxes we pay, etc., we need to also be aware that we require resources for addressing our growth and security challenges. Again, I want to remind you, the kind of world we are going to move in, I said geopolitics is very important. Global peace is not to be taken for granted. And, and every time you hear about uh, individual frauds committed on people, their bank accounts being hacked, etc. So we need to spend resources on security at the individual level, at the national level, spend money on R&D, etc. So we need to be aware of the multifarious requirements and demands for national growth and security when we think about fiscal resources, the government financial resources. Urban development, increasing urbanization rate or putting pressure on city infrastructures, we know that very well. Cities of tomorrow will have to provide not only affordable housing, clean water and sanitation, vibrant public spaces, energy efficient buildings, quality physical and digital infrastructure. In addition to new cities, existing urban centers must be transformed to reflect a growing India. Public transportation access. Only 38% of urban residents in India have convenient access to public transport. This is lower than even other developing countries. Convenient access to quality public transport is essential for enhancing quality of life. It's also an important contribution to climate change. India cannot afford to have as many per capita ownership of cars as US has. So we need to make sure that private modes of transport actually only feed into public transport rather than competing with public transport. And that means integrating private transport and public transport Urban development for Amritkal, 14 large cities with a population of above 30 lakhs will have transit-oriented development plans. More than 90% of the total projects amounting to 1.45 lakh crores have been completed in the Smart Cities mission. It has led to the development of 4,500 plus green spaces, 273 green mobility projects and 1.47 crore new sewage connections across target cities. And increased budget allocation for PM Avas Yojana from 25,000 crores to 30,000 crores. Housing needs of one crore urban poor and middle class families will be addressed with an investment of 10 lakh crore. Water supply, sewage treatment, and solid waste management projects and services for 100 large cities through bankable projects. And Namaste scheme, all cities and towns will be enabled for 100% mechanical de sludging of septic tanks. Sustaining the infrastructure development, I showed you earlier the kind of infrastructure creation that has happened in the last 10 years, partly because of government's capital expenditure going up by more than two times in the last four years alone. But compared to even last six years, it has come from 1% of GDP to 3.5% of GDP. Emphasis on capital expenditure is both for creating productive assets addressing infrastructure bottlenecks and creating employment as well. Central public sector enterprises also spent a total of 6.8 lakh crores in the last 8-9 months between April and February 2024 on capex reaching 92% of the combined central government and public sector enterprise capex target. And as I showed you earlier, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. The length of national highways in the country gone up from 97,000 to 145,000, 1.45 lakh kilometers. Cargo handling, 581 million tons to 784 million tons. Electrified rail route going up from 22,000 kilometers to 50,000. And number of airports I mentioned earlier as well. So we are seeing the impact of the government spending our tax money rupees going towards boosting the infrastructure. But we are a growing population, we are a large country, existing infrastructure has to be renewed, new climate compatible infrastructure has to be created. So therefore, this is not a mission accomplished, 
is it a mission that is ongoing and we need to find new resources as well and at the same time we also want to improve the credit rating of the economy in may standard and poor which is one of the global credit rating agencies upgraded india's outlook from stable to positive they did actually improve the credit rating they said we will improve the outlook from stable to positive this has been done for the first time in 13 years but if we have to get an actual improvement in the credit rating from triple b minus to triple b or triple b plus indonesia and philippines have triple b and triple b plus respectively that will lower the interest burden on the government that will lower the interest burden on all of us because the government borrowing cost is the benchmark if the government is able to borrow at a lower rate of interest that all interest rates in the economy will also come down so fiscal consolidation our tax revenues keeping spending going only towards productive assets i showed you 50% now is a allocation of spending between capital and revenue items some